Okay. Okay, I'm just sharing once again screen. So yesterday we have seen uh, uh, the flow of a uh, whole BI environment. It's like uh, related to some other uh, demo session, but still we can uh, utilize for uh, up to extraction, ETL, transformation and load. Okay, so this is a uh, uh, overview of uh, BA, complete the BA process. It's not related to only the ETL, it is all the BA process. And yesterday, the same thing we got, uh, we have done, right? So today, what I'll do, I'll just go further uh, and I will just try to explain what is the ETL flow. Means we are specific to ETL. BI means it's BI is a combination of ETL plus reporting plus the modeling concept as well, right? And sharing those reports to the end users. But only the ETL flow means uh, we are going to talk uh, particularly about the ETL flow, how we are going to handle uh, the IJU data factory and how we are going to maintain the data using these two AD, ADF and as well database. So specific to ETL, uh, generally what I said, like uh, we can have uh, the data in the OLTP, the business data in various sources in various sources for suppose i have some data on uh, like uh, excel sheets for example i have data in the excel sheet some some set of data just uh, uh, i'll just go slowly like uh, i want to be uh, very particular about this process because this is again even in interviews if people ask you what is your project flow as a etl developer not the BA developer, as the ETL developer, what is your flow? <clears throat> Parmeshwar Chari is having some echoing from my voice. So any other people also having the same? And, uh, and uh, yeah, so I got reply like they're flying, they're clear and uh, Parmeshwar, uh, okay, fine. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for your replies. Uh, so, permission, we have to take care of uh, Chari. Uh, and uh, someone not able to, Jaya, Jaya Simha, uh, Jay Simha, maybe. Like, uh, I'm unable to hear. <laughs> so, you can just rejoin once. And, uh, yeah, I'm very, I mean, most of the people are saying I'm clear. So, I'm fine, good to go. Okay. So, I'll just go on a smoother way. Don't, uh, I mean, uh, get panic like what I am doing or like what I'm, at the end of the day, you'll get all the picture, okay? So let uh, do what I am uh, like, uh, that get going, uh, means my main intention, don't get any confusion or anything. We are just uh, on the flow, but only the thing, it will take some time to come to understand hold that flow, okay? So for example, the OLTP servers uh, data might lay on, uh, a different mode of uh, aspects like uh, Excel, some cases, and uh, CSV file uh, and uh, text icon. So CSV files. So assume that your data is laying on different layers like this and uh, For example, and I have some DB, two more, two more sources I'll just keep, two more sources, like a database icon also I'll show. For example, so my OLTP data, some data where is it is having security and uh, having some data management faster should be in the database engine. Retrieving the data from an a CSV file will be faster or from Excel sheet will be faster. I have some thousand records. Within that thousand records, I have some uh, two records I want to see based on their customer ID or based on their employee ID for suppose. If I go to CSV, what I have to do? CSV file means how does it looks? 
for example if i go to the files uh, so the csv files looks like this generally for example if i just try to open this data it will take uh, time for example this is a csv file so this is a notepad plus plus i recommend you people to try to go ahead and install this notepad plus plus it is a free of cost it's a one of the software which we use one of the application we can use in the real time it helps in many ways at the database perspective it will help you at python coding if you want to understand it can help you so whatever languages uh, you want to convert the code no those are all xml code and uh, on the v like visual basic code whatever the code you want no it can uh, have a very easy look and we can format it in such way so it is a powerful component which is a notepad plus plus you can get for free of cost okay you can download here also so from this whole data i want to pull on uh, one of the employee id will it be easy or if i go to an excel sheet and if i filter the data will be easy definitely if i filter uh, if i filter the data from the excel sheet would be faster better than csv when i compare to csv it is better in excel sheet in the same way if i want to get a, if i want to get from a database then the database faster the database is more faster correct or not so like this uh, the data management uh, based on the data management uh, the data sets uh, will be stored in various sources if really the data retrieval is really not required very faster it can take some time and it is not having much security it is a general data for example if you take we have enquiries there are a lot of people who will come and enquiry for the credit card loan credit card application but they, no one will go in means in some cases people will go and apply for the credit card but most of the people for example 100 enquiries came within that 10 enquiries may go further but those 100 application enquiries uh, we are just keeping in excel but the 10 applications which are uh, enrolled for uh, or applied for the credit card they are very important to us correct or not so these 100 records of the just enquiring about the credit card i have to keep in excel sheet or in a csv file but the people who are applied and got the eligibility and got the approval to the card uh, they have to be made, they are my customers now so they say they have to be secure their transaction should be secure and uh, whenever they require some trans statements uh, the data should run faster so these all things will happen in database more than the excel sheet or csv file all the ways security wise management wise and uh, uh, storage wise so everywhere the database is convenient so i'll save that data in database so that my license cost also will useful for only the customers who are the customers so that uh, the enquiries data i can keep in csv files right so like that we can maintain uh, so in some cases uh, i feel uh, maintaining the data in xml format would be better why because my data in xml format really it's not uh, user friendly it is going to be means it's like specific uh, format of language we required html so if you know html we can understand the code of xml which is in a hierarchical format so there are different ways of formats that we have to store the data that is all whole thing i want to say <clears throat> okay so now for example xml so like this i have various sources from the source and what kind of source is this i said it can maintain as a oltp source OLTP means what? Online Transaction Processing System, which is also called as what? RDBMS, Relational Database Management System, right? As a education, while you are learning, you are going to say this is an RDBMS. But in the real time, when you are working, uh, you have to uh, make a habit of uh, uh, calling it as OLTP, Online Transaction Processing System, right? Now. The data which is laying in these sources are really very important to me. For example, as I said, uh, enquiries, I said, uh, when enquiries will come to the business, when you promote uh, the business into the market, then enquiries are going to come, correct or not? You are going to promote, you have, you, the people has to know that you are running a business, right? How do we, we can go to the customer based on advertisements, paper ads, right? Which, so there are multiple ways 
and advertisements i give multiple ways paper ad i can give pamphlets i can give or else uh, yeah online marketing i can do email promotions i can do there are a lot of things so how do you people came to know about uh, this institution there is a multiple way right so those all uh, so 100 enquiries came but 100 enquiries will not really be a business to me again but 100 enquiries came that is by one month or like two uh, 15 days or 20 days how many days it took to get those 100 the uh, enquiries based on that uh, those 100 within that 100 enquiries how many people came from which kind of promotion there are 100 people who came for enquiries but uh, 15 people came from like a pamphlet uh, we have where did where did you see our business means pamphlet uh, there is a where did you come to know means other 10 people said reference one of my friend already took a credit card from your uh, bank so i just came uh, based on his enquiry based on his uh, reference like that uh, the 30 people are coming based on the paper ad and 20 people are coming like that what is the maximum number based on the advertisement i have to check that's what tomorrow i can go and invest in that business more in that advertisement more that is what the business logic right so lastly i got 100 enquiries means this 100 enquiries came in different modes not in one mode not in walk in only all are not in walk in so definitely they we came to know the business based on uh, tv ads or like uh, movie ads or like paper ads or like pamphlets or like online marketing whatever it is so these all things we have to take care so at the end of the day i have to know which advertisement i have to do more better way from tomorrow that will come purely based on the enquiries means enquiries data is also important to us but management wise it might might not really much important who within these 100 customers how many how within these 100 enquiries how many converted into customers is required that goes customers data is required so now i want to pull the data to into my warehouse because i have report i have to show the reporting no reporting i have to show what i have to show paper ad these many and uh, like a tv ad these many people and uh, walk in these many people reference these many people i have to show a report to the end user so that tomorrow he will take a decision okay go and invest more on this tv ad so that we will get more customers more enquiries right or not so if i want to take further there is a problem here because i see the paper ad enquiries are coming through excel for example paper ad exam uh, coming from excel data they are storing and uh, from uh, pamphlet ad uh, they are coming they are maintained as a csv files for suppose and uh, maybe like uh, online marketing online uh, means through website in an online application if you apply that is coming through xml data for example and uh, in a database i am maintaining like uh, references means references means already they will have reference link so that they are sharing that is storing in directly in the database for suppose now these different mode of ads are coming in different sources uh, this data i have to make it as see for example in excel if you go and see in excel the data types of the data would be the data types of the data would be maintained in a different mode see here we got like a general in general we can maintain number we can maintain time and again one point to me is decimal currency accounting short date long date time percentage these all are the different type of data types to store the values correct or not in the same way do we have any data types in csv file no for example if i go and uh, type uh, see for example if i go and uh, see this do i have any specific data type if i try to go ahead and if i try to uh, enter here uh, rajesh it is also going to take One second, the keyboard is not working. Okay, so here, uh, just one second, it got stuck there. Okay. okay so i'll just take a notepad so if i try to enter and a name as ead ead means what employee id we know that employee id means numbers only but csv can restrict me if i am typing string it cannot restrict 
but in database it will restrict in excel maybe the data type will convert again the other values will get affected so but csv cannot do anything means it cannot maintain the data types right so these all uh, are the ways to store the data but these all together at a time i mean in the same manner i can go ahead and i cannot uh, perform uh, uh, transformations on this particular data correct or not because when i do these uh, transformations my my for example my transformation in azure data factory if it is taking an employee id employee id is defined as an integer definitely the integer values only it can handle but in csv it is maintained as a text file for suppose those values are getting affected or not means whenever i want to transform this data this data on all the sources uh, definitely the data types the nature of the storage of this data in this uh, sources is different definitely it will affect my azure data factory if directly i go and uh, do the transformation so what i want to do i want to create a temporary space i want to create a temporary say, space i want to create a temporary space and i want to store these all values uh, and i want to convert into a single source this is called staging area this is called staging area this is the first layer in etl you do extractions and land your data in the staging area why because here i have various sources excel data is there csv file data is there database data is there xml data is there that nature of the storage in that sources is different but in the target if i want to perform transformations i have to convert them into a single source that's why i make them as a i'll make them as a landing area this is a staging area so now your uh, oltp so this staging area means it's a copy of data set nothing i will do i'll do nothing i can say this as a copy of the data source copy of the source just uh, one to one like copy just to copy of the sources will land here right that is called one to one mapping as well so your etl flow will start from here in your work environment so this is your landing area so once the data is coming and falling into this particular uh, staging area we can maintain the staging area in uh, different modes for example just uh, one of the source i'll try to say azure data lake icon means uh, we we came to know multiple uh, terminologies yesterday we got like data lake storages we lock uh, we came to know like a uh, 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 synapse sql warehouse these all things right so those namings where exactly we are going to use i'll make it clear today so this is for example data lake this is one of the maintenance means we can do storage data lake storage means uh, just uh, it's not mandatory again i'm saying that it's not mandatory uh it can be so this staging area can maintain the data here as a data lake storage account also for suppose right so that means what now all the various integrated various sources of data integrated into one source or not here what i am going to do i am going to perform a extraction from these sources like staging area i can i have to do transformation also why in my employee id in the customer id sorry enquiry id from the csv i am getting as a text but in excel i am getting as a number in database i am getting a decimal number and in xml i am getting it as an in integer so various sources various data types the length of these data types are different right so now this all i have to convert into a single source and i have to load it into a staging this text should convert into a number right or not so those transformations i'll do basic transformation but directly it is one to one loading only one to one means what whatever you have in the source the same thing will be reflected in the staging area as well so that's why we call staging area what is meant by staging area means it is a temporary memory temporary memory so one of the interview question in the project uh, flow if you are asking if you asked like uh, what is uh, meant by staging area means it is a temporary memory just a temporary because only just landing we are doing that's it so the here uh, once all the data set is 
here data set is maintained here meaning okay data set is here like a data lake storage now this data has to so okay once the data is completely landed into the staging do we require these sources again once the data is uh, landed into these sources this data is copied into this uh, data lake storage again these sources are required no because this data is there right so once the data is loaded here after completion of loading the data here we are going to remove these files or spaces because tomorrow some other data has to come and land here correct or not till today what are the enquiries i have i have maintained here because the space consumption space is required right so once this data is copied into the data lake storage why again these files these files are not required the data should make it empty so that is the process that is called that is going to be done with control flow in the azure data factory also we have control flow activities but their namings are different that's it okay so here where uh, we are going to perform etl transformations data flows we have to perform here also we can do with control activity either way but uh, that we can do flow so this is the first layer so what i what is meant by first layer just copying the sources data to the single source data that is called staging layer next once the data is uh, storing here and next uh, i want to make a see the data is coming here from various sources right for example uh, my main intention is to apply for a savings account but unfortunately i applied for a credit card amount credit card like my intention is to apply open by savings account i got a link from so and so the link whoever sent no those are like those people said it is a credit card uh, form you have to fill it uh, sorry savings account form you have to fill it to the customer to the enquiry but uh, the enquiry is a uh, person uh, intention is to open a savings account now i want to this is this database is going to maintain only the credit card enquiries only and credit card databases only but uh, the intention of the person is what savings. savings account right so now is it a valid record no it should not store in this database it should store in another database maybe if it is valid only but not here it might might store in another source correct or not another database now i have to validate that i have to validate that like that there can be any kind of data mismatches i have my credit card applications only in a particular hyderabad and in a particular amripet area or like madapur area some registered areas not in all the areas but i am getting the data from andhra pradesh is it a valid data i am very strict to area wise of course but there is a other business executives who can handle the andhra pradesh data but i am strictly for hyderabad so when i am looking for hyderabad data alone if i am getting andhra pradesh means other area data is it valid for me again no correct or not so and again my application so i have a some promotion promotion means if you apply today i'll give you 5 lakhs of uh, uh, direct 5 lakhs of eligibility if you apply today but uh, i have applied tomorrow for example can i expect that 5 lakhs no that 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 enquiry that enquiry should not come under the 5 lakhs promotion but he is asking 5 lakhs promotion it's not possible that is uh, again another validation we have to check these all things correct or not we have to check all these things and we have to keep a valid data in the target right because i have to compare now from which area from which mode of pap, uh, ad uh, i'm getting these uh, uh, enquiries i have to validate because tomorrow i have to take a particular decision on this particular uh, ad mode we can keep more investment i want to take a decision but i cannot take on all the data simply correct or not i have to validate the data so we do the validations and uh, we load the data into the next level but this kind this layer can be not mandatory means it can dependent it, be, it can be dependent from uh, one uh, employee one uh, client to another client maybe may not be see this is all the flow i am giving commonly which we use for etl flow okay 
So this is ODS layer. We say ODS. ODS means operational data source, which is the exact data. Ma means exactly on which data you have to perform some uh, uh, analysis. That data will store in ODS. Exactly from data in data like storage, there will be hundred records. But while do validations and when I'm loading, I may get only 80, 80 records. Those are valid records. On 80 records, I have to take a decision. I should not take on 100 because the 100 are uh, mismatches. They are a lot of mismatches. They are coming from different regions. They are coming from different dates. They are coming from different uh, uh, time period and the different more products. Example, correct or not? So ODS layer, when we are storing, we do a lot of data validations. And uh, the data ODS layer, again, uh, we can maintain in, uh, see, there are two generations of data like storages, two generations generation one, generation two, but really we have some differences in that. So it is also again optional. I'm just keeping uh, only the purpose of uh, where exactly these all technologies we can use. I'm just keeping, okay? So this can be a gen two. This can be a gen one, I suppose. So uh, there is a different mode of storage uh, in which case what storages we have to do. These all things will come to know again because there is a specific topic, okay? Day to day, we will complete all the concepts. At the end of the day, whole picture will come. At the end of the day, when we are talking with the project, all those resources will use them, okay? So now this is only just for our understanding all the components where we can use because the real-time project, real-time in the work environment, uh, there are some uh, uh, prestigious clients. They are not, they, are, they don't go back step. They don't do back step on investing licenses. They don't go for back step on, uh, investing whatever the amount they require client they'll say whatever charges happen i don't bother but it should be making sense my business has to take run day to day i have to see improvement not uh, down downfall right everyone go for that well, yeah. maybe some people says in the money wise i won't get more profits in some people says i have to expand my business from country to country some people say maybe brand wise the customers i have to give the quality so I, I'm not really much looking into the profits in the money ways. I look into the customer satisfaction. There are some other people like that. There are different modes of business people are working on, right? So to satisfy them, the clients, uh, the, the IT people has to work on. So if really it is a, this is all about investing a lot of amount or not maintaining staging area in one area, in an ODS in another area like that. So now when I am going to this data, maybe while I'm transferring this whole data into this uh, generation two, what I said, maybe the validations will happen. Data validations. For example, this is validation one. What is validation one? I have promoted my business only in Hyderabad. I have, I should get only the inquiries from Hyderabad only. That is my validation. So this is one uh, uh, city wise. And uh, I have promoted the data on a uh, particular date, particular date. But uh, the inquiries which are coming uh, after that particular date or before to that particular date are not really valid for me because I have to purely come to know which ad we have to keep more investment I have to do. So on the date wise, we have to do validations. Correct or not? So next uh, on particular uh, product. Product-wise, uh, I have done advertisement. I did not do advertisement on savings account. I did not only on the particular day. Product-wise, I did some uh, advertisement. So I have to get the product exact matching of that product inquiries only, not other inquiries. It's, it's not like that. Any inquiries, inquiry only, but still, just for our uh, understanding, I'm talking, okay? So now product-wise, uh, validation should happen. And the next, uh, I have advertisement, for example, uh, maybe this is all related to ICICI bank uh, advertisements, per suppose. Maybe there is a coming from requirement from uh, SGFC as SGFC credit card they want, they are looking for. That is a valid again? No, that is also invalid. So those also should not come. So brand wise, we have to do brand wise also validation. These are all validations we have to do. After successful of these validations, which data is uh, remaining, that data has to go for uh, load it into the ODS. Again, who is going to do this all process? ETL. ETL means what? ADF, Azure Data Factory, or Data Breaks, whatever we use. So these things should happen based on these ETL flows. So this is your next layer, ODS layer. Right? Is it clear? 
so this is one of the most important uh, interview question as the project level what is your etl flow how did you load your data to the targets means into the warehouse it's not simple like this as i said yesterday ba process uh, oltp will be there ET, uh, data warehouse will be there simply we do this is overall ba process within that ba etl is one part and we are very specific to learning about etl so etl we have to talk about so these all validations we are keeping now in ods what kind of data is there validated data it's really validated data correct or not now what is the main purpose of our uh, etl to take uh, to extract the data in the warehouse from the oltp from the business data and load it into the warehouse what is the warehouse purpose data warehouse olap online analytical processing we have to remember these all points really mandatory because uh, data warehouse is maintained to maintain history data oltp data business data day to day data transactions will be there oltp olap maintains history why should we maintain history we have to maintain business analysis we have to use that history data for business analysis yesterday that's what we have discussed completely correct or not so that data we are going to maintain in a history so history means how can we maintain history so which is history record which is current record we have to know or not today which data is coming is current record yesterday's data which i am getting is history data and uh, the history is defined in multiple ways maybe some client says last one year from this year is my current data only last year's data is history some people says from yesterday only my data is history that is depends business to business the logic changes okay so now i have to maintain a history so that is our last layer this is our last layer what is that layer old uh, data warehouse layer but the data warehouse directly we don't load again because data warehouse is a uh, huge concept so we can say that uh, we are maintaining data marts we maintain data marts so data marts means what simple example i'll tell you you'll understand for example you take an educational institution when you have an uh, educational institution in that educational institution we'll have hod department management department and teaching department non teaching department and uh, recruitment department like department wise people will segregate and work right correct or not so when you have all these information at one source that is your data warehouse but if you have individually means teaching staff department information completely i'll keep it at one place non teaching staff information i'll keep it in another place management i'll keep in another place recruitment i'll keep in another place means that data contains that database contains only that particular department data that is data that data mart so first of all we will generate the marts data marts we are going to generate data marts so the data marts uh, are very important in the warehouse so how this data marts loads so till ods how the data is loading the data is loading use based on validations in the staging layer direct copy one to one in the ods validations we did then data mart while loading what we do is uh, we see whether that record is history record or uh, current record we see and we will try to maintain we'll try to maintain so how do validate uh, how do we maintain history record means again is is these all layers again they get again validated validated so type 2 implementation sd type 2 type 1 type 3 there are three different types to maintain the history so either any one so just introduction about scd 1 scd 2 so if i am technically going further just bear with me it is very uh, sensitive like what i can say scd is really our uh, main terminology or one of the word that we have to know throughout our etl process we are going to depend on these dimensions only that can be scd or an scd okay so scd type 1 type 2 type 3 most of you people maybe if you complete uh, one of msba course or like a power bi course maybe people can come, come to know okay so azure data factory is the pure etl tool which should flow the data either in any one of these types SD type 1 maintains only current data. Type 2 maintains current plus historical data. Type 3 maintains current plus partial history. Partial history means recent history, not all the history. 
So data warehouse maintains what? History. So history means which type is maintaining complete history? Type two. So type two implementation we have to do while loading the data into the data match. Type two implementation we have to do while loading the data into the data match. This is our main last advanced concept that we have to complete at the end of the day using Azure Data Factory or Databricks. Got it right? So this is uh, our main course. Means this all flows and all why we are doing means to maintain the target in the history format. Correct or not? Today I'm working in the client for the client, but tomorrow I'll not work. Tomorrow I'll, the client will not pay your lifetime. No, client will play until what you work. So the first year, this year I'm doing development. I do all these developments, type one, type two, type three, I do. Next day, next year, I'll not be there, but the system has to work. That's where the tools will come. Azure Data Factory, these all will be automated. So these will run in the future as well. These, those will maintain the history. Means today's data is current data for today, but next year, this year data will be history or not. So it should maintain as a history again. So that we are going to. So there are some rules that we have to follow to maintain type one, type two, type three. So type two is the major concept that we build on, we stand on. Type two is the major. So first of all, just, uh, so this last concept may be, we can be maintained as a synapse. Uh, at the finally, the database, it can be Synapse, it can be SQL Server, it can be anything again, uh, SQL Warehouse or else. The names got changed now. Yeah, so we can uh, see like a warehouse concept, SQL Warehouse. So the snipping, you people also make it habit. I'm not just uh, showing for a time pass or something. The snipping is very most important because you have to perform unit testing means uh, you have to do these all things. You have to take uh, images like this, the source data, target data, and you have to specify that. Uh, so the snipping is one of our regular life usage. We do we do unit testing, no? Those unit testings are required to maintain, uh, uh, to take. Uh, so this is your warehouse. The data marts, all data marts will maintain this warehouse only, okay? so. So make it use of snipping. It is very, very wonderful tool, which will capture the images just to practice. Because when you are going for an ETL, one of the roles and responsibility that you have to perform unit testing. Unit testing means what? The code which you developed as a developer, you have to do testing on some test cases, not on uh, complete testing. You do just basic uh, developer level means. What is your source? My source is uh, uh, an employee having an employee ID in the text format, but in the target, it has to load it as an integer. That is what my test case. Whether my test case is successful or not, I have to take the source screenshot. Whatever I did in the Azure Data Factory as to convert the source string to integer, what I did, I have to show that snapshot, that shot. And at the target, whether this column ID is storing the data in the format of integer or not, I have to take that snapshot. These three I have to keep and I have to say the result is success. So this date document is very mandatory, very important. Client will not allow you to just uh, orally if you say he'll not accept. So completely data warehouse is our uh, end uh, output. So this type one, type two, type three, which I maintained here just simply, but uh, they are very powerful. This is the last stage that we are going to work on. So once if we are able to do with uh, type two mainly, because type one, type three, we can uh, exp leave. We, we are not really particular about it, but type two is very mandatory. Because as an ETL developer, we have to do the type two implementation only, right? So this is all the process where I have done. If anyone can answer, where I have done means uh, I'll show you the BI BI environment uh, image now. Till what level to what level I did? What level to what level I did? Uh, I got some messages. Uh, people are having some other discussion. Okay, in the chat window. If you, okay, clear about the topics which I'm talking, definitely I'm fine, no problem. But if not, just uh, uh, answer these things like uh, from which ETL flow I have done now. So whatever I have shown you, the flow would come between what level in the BI, BI environment from 
OLTP to OLAP in this between ETL, whatever is there that will come here. That is the, this is the whole process. So as a BA developer, you can talk about this whole process, but as a ETL developer, you have to talk about this process, right? So your project architecture is nothing but the same stages, but what you have to then, but as of now today, really we are not much uh, known of the all terminologies in Jeju data factory. I'm not talking clearly about the terminology. But uh, at the end of the day, once you complete the training, then we will come to know. Then we will come to know this all process. Okay. Not first three layers, only the first OLTP to OLAP. That's it. So this is for today concept. So tomorrow, specifically, how the ETL flows will run. How what means in Azure Data Factory? I'll just open once the account again. So to log in, first of all, we should have an Azure Microsoft account. More maybe Monday onwards, I'll try to show you how to set up an Azure account. Tomorrow also, I'll show you the Azure Data Factory completely tomorrow, how it works, what requires to work, how the data loads from one layer to another layer. These all things practically I'll show you tomorrow. I will show from my side, but you people to set up your environment, it might take from Monday. Okay. So I'm just signing into my account. So today, first of all, I'm just talking on overall process. This is the BI environment. And next I'm coming to specific to ETL process. Now ETL layers, all things we came to know. And tomorrow, what we will do, how we can implement these all layers in uh, Azure Data Factory that we will talk tomorrow. And how these flows will run. That is also other thing that we have to do. But again, it is like a, a single step, not uh, in detail I will uh, cover. So from Monday, we will start uh, set up in the account and uh, maximum uh, we will start SQL classes as well, right? SQL also is required. Yeah, so how to set up this account, how to create an account? There is a free account, uh, we don't need to worry, but still we have to require a credit card. One month you'll get, but really I feel uh, pay as you go also if you go, Definitely it is a minimal minimum charge I'm facing. See here, I'll just show you what is the amount. For the whole one month, I'm getting charged. This is 435. And uh, I do regularly classes, like uh, even I have, uh, I mean, not more classes I have, only two classes. So 10 to 11 also I have one hour uh, class. So only for these two classes, when I'm running with some data and data sets are very small, to be honest and uh, pipelines, everything, I don't create more, but I'll create one by one. So I'm getting very less charge. Even your, for your practice also, it will be enough. If really, means if you have a credit card, you have to get a pay as you, I mean, uh, without credit card also, you can go for pay as you go account, a debit card you have to get, but it is a visa card. And uh, the banks like uh, SBI is not allowing, I guess. And uh, some other bank, uh, uh, I, I got like with ICICI, uh, maybe uh, SBI is not working. I have seen that I have experienced it that. If really if you people have ICIC, debit card is also fine. And uh, nowhere amount will be detected automatically. You have to pay, you will get mail as a invoice so that you can pay on your own. But at some point of time, maybe on today, if your uh, bill is generated for 500 or 100 or 1000 or 5000, whatever it is, on the next uh, 40, I mean, 15 days, it will give 15 days time to pay the bill. If not, then it will try to detect the amount from that amount from your debit card. So once if you want to set up the account, you have to definitely give your card details. Without card details, no free account also will not come. Okay. But uh, really, it's not uh, much uh, heavy uh, load that uh, by due to cost wise, we will not face definitely I can do but we have to be very sure we are owning the offing all the resources when you are shutdowning means when you are logging out to this account you have to uh, do pause or like no running mode should come if running mode is there bill will generate continuously that's the only thing we have to take care but it's not really a headache thing it is a simple thing yeah yeah we will go for sql also Vasavi. i got some message uh, 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 message from here so wasabi so we go we go for that so yeah starting the second and all we will see from uh, Manway tomorrow i'll purely talk about the etl flow uh, those things are seen was uh, definitely we will talk uh, but uh, definitely we have to flow uh, we have to follow because 
uh, Srinivas is asking like, what is difference between Lake One, Generation One, Generation Two? There are a lot of storages wise. There are a lot of differences. We will talk them practically, but today I'm just giving you introductions. That's it. So coming to this uh, ADF, uh, so this ADF is going to run on uh, uh, using in multiple uh, sources resources. Okay, so we have to get uh, yeah, but Databricks we required. Uh, the PySpark, uh, whoever I am not sure the main name, Lakshman. Yeah, whatever required uh, the, the secondary skills for the main skill, like data, Ezu Data Factory or Ezu uh, Data Bricks, uh, we will go with those Python, PySpark, those are required. Spark also requires. Uh, Spark clusters only we are going to run. So, but really, it's not like uh, all the concepts you required means no. Okay, it's required only for the flow which we required, we can learn those. Okay, that is enough, more enough. Because in the work environment, there will be separate teams. To handle the Spark clusters, there are people who will work on those Spark clusters. So they will help us with the Spark code. But still, we have to know basic. We have to know how to use it, no? They'll give you the code, but you should know how to use it at least. So that's why we'll know those basics, Python or PySpark or like a, a Spark, whatever it is. So those all things are secondary skills. Definitely we require, but we will uh, see based on the how much level requirement we require, we do that in that way, okay? So coming to the ADF, uh, we create the pipelines, but the pipeline, how these pipelines will work? That is the definitely we require. So the data flows we are covering in, other, in another class. So this is like a conditional splits. So we have different transformations. So my main agenda, once the account is set up and everything hands on to you, all of you, we have to complete the data flows. 20 to 25 data flows are there. So these data flows would come where? Anyone can uh, reply in the window. So either it can, but mainly I'll say in this layer, in this layer also. Type two implementation we can do, but to handle these source files, to load after loading these source files. Uh, see, once the data is uh, from that Excel sheet to till the data mat means complete the flow is in, at the end. Uh, this require this file is not required. Because I'll wait this, I'll keep this space empty for tomorrow's file. So after load of the data to the data mats, we have to remove this data. Those will be done in the activities. Activities means I'll show you. I got some uh, message mapping data flows here. So see here, once you go to here in the pipeline uh, and we can see these all our activities. Within the data flow, you can see the transformations. These all are the transformations. And uh, these all are activities like in the pipeline. So this will uh, handle, see, move or transform. Once the data is loaded to the target, we have to give hint to the source, uh, remove those all files. How we can give those all things we can do from these activities. Okay. So after after the completion of the flow to the data map, we, we just uh, uh, vanish the source uh, data. Uh, we remove the data so that or else we have to archive it. Archive it and keep secure. The, we will keep in another folder that is backup folder. So that is all the process in the worker environment we do. So we cannot remove, but uh, what I mean to say, we can archive these all sources into one and we'll share them, we'll copy them into the next uh, backup folder. That is a separate for server again. So that's it for today from my side. I just want to showcase today the pure ETL flow. That's what I mean. So whenever you are explaining your project, for example, ETL flow, either you use a MSBA, either you use a Power BI. So uh, ADF only main training, uh, whoever the question is, like uh, Shom Shekhar. Yeah, did mainly the training on ADF and as well AD, data factory, but whoever people registered accordingly, we will talk. But ADF is separate, Databricks is separate. After completion of ADF only, we'll go to Databricks, okay? So Databricks is purely code based. If I take coding directly first level, you'll be people will get confused. So what I'll do first, I'll run ADF flow within GUI. GUI means it is a very attractive, very uh, like uh, how you work with PowerPoint, how you work with uh, some uh, uh, applications, uh, no, we can do that way. So that's where the tools will be more attractive and more hands-on, user-friendly. These all are advantages with the GUI, graphical user interface. So first we will be habited to the GUI, ADFs, ADF flow. Later we will go for database, okay? So this is all about uh, the whole flow for today. Yeah, yeah. See, Sin was uh, definitely man on one day. We cannot come to know all these things, no differences. There are a lot of things that we will talk regularly. And day to day, you learn all these things. 
we cannot learn at one shot one day uh, even today we are also in the second uh, initial day but uh, your learning will start from monday definitely tomorrow you will come to know what is your integration run times fix the timings means 9 8 to 9 uh, mohan kumar uh, as per my knowledge and uh, even mother uh, also mother and girl also will confirm so uh definitely we will come all these things uh, day by day it is a day by day learning on one shot we cannot learn all the things that is for sure so what i recommend is uh keep learning and from monday it will start and tomorrow we will see integration run times what is the data sets and uh, what is the linked services these all things we will talk tomorrow okay from tomorrow onwards we will start learning